Some variety. Yeah, it's it's some battlefield. We'll, we'll see what happens. So yeah, we got the tried and true villager. Okay. Anima? Is yeah. That? Okay. Anima. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't believe Anima's rocking the the inkling. Which I haven't seen Inkling myself in a little bit. I've been away from the scene. Right. But yeah. in the early days of Ultimate, yeah, everyone was playing Inkling this character. Was a demon. Right. So I can't wait to see what she does with the Inkling herself. Yeah, I, I believe a lot of people thought highly of this character. Um, but honestly, like after three, four years of Ultimate of this game being out, not a lot of people enjoy her as much anymore. Right. So I'm glad to see some representation here. And again, uh, Anima going with the classic. Inkling as well. Yeah, and Inkling, I mean, like, Inkling, even in, like, the current meta, I feel like has really good matchups against those characters that struggle against, like, short characters or low-profile characters. Mm. But I don't know. I don't believe Villager is one of them, unless it's, like, hard to hit forward airs and back airs. Mm. I l it'll be fun to see how they, like, slowly adapt to one another. Right. This could be, like, for all we know, this could be, like, a projectile battle, right. considering, like, Literally, both of these characters have, like, just pockets full of projectiles. They just don't touch each other. <laughs> exactly. Throw some nades back and forth. Right. Panda Bear taking things kind of slow. It seems like he's taking the bait and punish approach. He's he's either, like, waiting for Anima to bring out a hitbox or shielding something punishable and capitalizing on those moments. And Panda Bear going to take the first stock, try to do some fancy footstool action, but nothing's going to quite pan out. Yeah, definitely. And uh, honestly, Panda Bear is in a pretty comfortable, you know, spot here. Doesn't have to, you know, do too much for, or, you know, to work hard for the stocks or whatnot in Anima. It's just, she's in this position where she does need to put some pressure on, but the Bowling wow. Ball F-Smash is going to come out and actually take her second stock. Yeah, that's going to do it. Bowling Ball, deceptively one of the strongest smash attacks in the game. Yeah. It doesn't always get the credit it deserves, but especially <laughs> on a character like Inkling, it'll take your stock at like 30, 40% if you hit them off the ledge. Yeah, especially if that's charged. If, that, if that's charged, you're gone. True. Say bye. Yeah, no, that's going to leave a lump on your forehead, like in a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Panda Bear, you're Panda Bear, you're pretty comfortable right now. Yeah. You can play as recklessly as you want to right. take this last stock and go in. Yeah. Oh wow, Trudy actually catching that landing. It's been unfortunate for Animal, and the axe is Ooh. going to do it. Yeah, gonna, I, honestly, like, I respect it when I get hit by the axe. Right. I'm like, okay, I forgot about that. That was cool. Yeah. I feel so stupid when I get hit by the like tree growth. Oh yeah. I'm like, how did I forget that yeah. was there? You know, it's like getting hit by snakes C4. Yeah. I think that's another interesting thing where um, that Panda Bear does do. Um, he usually kind of pulls away, but it'll still water the tree like from a distance. Yeah. So they won't see like, like the it's watered away. and then it's gonna it's gonna grow up. So he usually like almost like tricks them in a way to think he didn't water the tree, but then it sprouts up and then they get like hit by it. That hitbox is honestly crazy. Cause I think it does like 20, 30 damage. Yeah. No, like, it's it's huge. Yeah. Like, between that and bowling ball, you have such like polarizing moves. But they do have like pretty stubby hitboxes, so you really got to be precise with them. Right, definitely. So going on to um, Paulo Bastion here, actually. For yeah, Change I keep forgetting pace. this is a counter pick. Mm -hmm. Shout out Ignite and <laughs> whoever else carries this list. So uh, we actually got Anima, you know, changing the pace just a little bit here. It looks like percentages are more even. And she seems to be catching up just a little bit with Panda Bear, but again, he's going to be uh, slowing it down just a little bit, try to, you know, catch her, you know, lacking or whatever in this situation and just, you know, throwing a little bit of projectiles here. Wow, and, that was a oh, huge tech wow. chase from Anima. Didn't pan out, but the yeah. thought was there and it almost did some serious damage. Yeah, she definitely was trying to go for an F smash there. Maybe even up smash would have worked in that case. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, but again, uh, she could just, you know, run it back, try to get this first stock. Uh, she's, she's still in a comfortable spot to keep trying and whatnot. Yeah, and it's like when you lose a stock off of a tech chase, it, it, it can be, like, pretty detrimental to your mental sometimes because then you start to think, like, which way you should roll and get in your head a lot more. But they're going to find the roller and get the up smash anyway to take that first stock. Yeah. And this counter pick panning out for Anima. Yeah, definitely. She has the adaptation in pocket. She just has to finish strong. Yeah, definitely. Look at little dangerous sitting at 145. 
She's gonna try to get some extra credit here as she is doing so with all those aerials. Uh, and a little bit of pressure again, just trying to keep some distance because again, this is a really high percentage. And even slingshot back air is dangerous right now for Anima. So unfortunately, her first stock is going to be taken. Uh, but again, she does have that 43% on Fana up there right now. Yeah, and honestly, that was still a lot more extra credit than you'd want your opponent to get. Right. But it's not making Panda play any more aggressive or like rush this stock. Mm -hmm. He's still playing it slow, taking his time to get this damage. And that's the kind of thing you like to see. Right, definitely. Especially considering uh, his game style and whatnot, he usually just likes to kind of float around it. I mean, again, he's just, you know, using full advantage of Villager. He's a floaty character. You might as well take full advantage of that character and just his archetype and whatnot. Right, and I think it's interesting to note uh, the bomb, I don't know what it's called, the ink grenade, the bomb, it's been right. a really good tool for Anima because most characters struggle to hit both balloons against Villager when they recover. Right, yeah. Or like hit the balloons but not hit the character, but it seems like the bomb is doing a perfect job of hitting just the character, or just the balloons, mm -hmm. and sometimes the character. And it yeah. makes skimping or just like winning those offstage interactions a lot nicer. Yeah, definitely. It might not be too much of a safe option for Anima to keep uh, using though, because again, as we saw, Panamera can use his pocket, so yeah. it could be deadly. So I believe it does like double the damage back, I think, yeah, it does, if, it if does. Villager pockets an item. I forgot about that. So that, that could be extremely dangerous, but it looks like Anima is, you know, taking her time with this and just trying to follow the pacing. And, you know, it looks like she definitely uh, had better focus uh, the second game around than the, than the first game. Yeah, Panda Bear, though, going to take the lead as he trails ahead on this last stock. Anima going to find the answer. It's really close to taking the stock there, but no dice. Yeah, she's trying to look for a grab here, something just to get this second stock out of the way, something that will just, you know, just take it. And unfortunately, Panda Bear is just mixing her with these, like, down tilts and the dash attacks and whatnot, and just keeping his distance uh, with a slingshot as well. It's such a really good move, honestly. Even though it does, like, chip damage, it's still a really good move. Totally. And the way Panda Bear is playing around that center platform. And oh, see, there see, it is. See what I meant? See, I'm fuming right now. See what I meant? See? See? See what I meant? It's the water trail that yeah. no one notices, and and once it's too late to see it, the tree sprouts. He faded away. He's <laughs> playing Animal Crossing with cheat codes. <laughs> he knows something we don't. He, yeah, he's using cheat engine. <laughs> no, that was good though. Like there was that adaptation from Anima going into game two, but Panda Bear kind of slowed down right. and adapted to the adaptation. Yeah. And. Uh, Honestly, he looked in control the rest of the set. Yeah, definitely. It was a really good attempt coming from Anima. Um, she was able to, you know, change pacing and even a little bit of her game style, uh, game two. But unfortunately, it just was not enough to take the set. So, unfortunate to see that. But 